Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be using the new Launch Torque 5 as a scan tool and a multimeter. So something kind of unique to this is it has a VCI, the, the vehicle connection interface, that has a built-in lab scope and then on the bottom it actually has ports for the multimeter. So in my last video on the Lexus we used the lab scope portion. In this video we're going to use the scan tool and the multimeter portion because on the vehicle we're going to be working on today i think i have a power problem going to the fuel pump um, it doesn't have fuel pressure so we are going to verify that we have good power it's a vehicle that is known for having issues with a power supply um, so i think this will be fairly easy to test and we can test out the multimeter function of this at the same time so we have a couple of options when we connect to the multimeter of this tool. By default, if we just hook up the scan tool, it is gonna be wireless on the scan tool portion from here to the handheld unit. If we want to use the multimeter, we can either connect a USB cord from here to here, which will limit you a little bit on you know, how far away you can be from this, or we can connect wirelessly. This does have an internal battery, or if we are connected to the data link port, it'll power off of the data link port, or it has a auxiliary plug-in where we can hook 12 volts. There is a power button on top of the unit that we have to press and hold to power up the meter and scope side of this unit. By default, if we plug this into the car, it's not gonna power up that other side. So we'll have to hold this button down. It beeped, the lights came on, and now the unit is powered up. Once we fire up the tablet, we can connect to that multimeter now. Um, sometimes it does take a second, and sometimes you have to select your, your unit, and you do have to set that up in order for it to work wirelessly. If you use a long USB cable uh, to go from this to this, you know, that will expand your distance of which you can travel. Um, today we are gonna run into a little bit of an issue because I'm going to want to do bi-directional controls, so I'm gonna have this connected to the vehicle we're gonna be doing some voltage testing under the hood. So I have a long set of test leads um, that I bought from AES Wave, and we're gonna connect those to the bottom. And they're called test drive test leads or scope leads, and they're about 10 feet long. So that'll give us some room to get from inside the cabin of the vehicle under hood to the fuse box where we're gonna be testing. And I also wanna mention, I've charged this unit once, and I've used it for about a week, and I don't power it down. I just you know, hit the button and turn the screen off, and I'm still at 50% capacity. So this unit itself has a pretty good sized battery in it. Um, I'm, I'm quite impressed because many of my other scan tools, if I leave them turned on, even in sleep mode, for a day, the battery is completely dead. And this one's lasted about a week, and I've, I've used it on dozens of vehicles. So let's go ahead and connect our scan tool interface. Now, I left it powered up for the multimeter section. We can see we have a power light on. Now the battery light is uh, not illuminated. It says vehicle, um, but we're not actually connected to the vehicle yet. The diagnosis light is lit up and the measurement light is not lit up. Once we connect to this as a scope or a multimeter, the measurement light will light up. Once we start scanning it and communicating to the vehicle, the blue light will start flashing. But when we plug this in, we should see the battery light start flashing, just indicating that we are charging. Now I believe once the battery in this depletes itself, if we weren't connected with the data link connector, we're just running it as a wireless scope or multimeter. If the voltage gets low, the battery light will start flashing as well. So now that we're connected, I'm gonna turn the key on. And we are going to auto detect this vehicle. Now, if it doesn't auto detect, we can go in and pick the vehicle manually, which does happen from time to time. So the VIN has been read, it decoded the information. We have a 2012 Dodge Ram. Yes, this is a 2500 HD. So we're gonna to go to diagnostics. Now, I have not scanned this vehicle yet. I just know that we didn't have any fuel pressure and the power supply is the thing we're questioning next. So I don't know if you guys saw that warning that popped up that says if there's other communication interfaces installed, um, to remove those first. This does have some sort of GPS tracker underneath the dash, it is a fleet vehicle. Uh, they have it pretty well secured and taped up. We're gonna see if we can do our functional testing and code reading without removing that device. Um, but if we run into issues, then we'll just remember that we need to go back in and unplug that and then try it again. So we have our vehicle information here. And this time it did pop up that it is a Ram 2500, 5.7 non-turbo. I didn't know they made a turbo option, but you never know. And we have our entire vehicle list. Now this is a 
topology screen, it's only showing us can high and it shows everything on can high. So I don't know if this vehicle actually has multiple buses or not, or if this is an issue because of that add-on device, or if that test will be in the BCM or the TIPM. So let's go to actuation test. Fuel pump relay control state. So we can turn it on, off, or we can toggle it. I prefer the toggle method because it gives me some flexibility of looking for a change in the waveform. Um, if we're looking at the voltage on that and it's working properly, we're gonna see it kick on, kick off, kick on, kick off. Okay, so now that I activated that, I can actually hear the fuel pump running, um, which is not the, uh, the way this vehicle was operating the other day. So let's go ahead and jump under the hood and take a look. So this is the underhood fuse panel. There is a module attached to the bottom of this fuse panel. Um, the fuel pump relay is actually not one of these upper relays that is serviceable. It's in the circuit board down below. And that's normally where we find our problem. This is our fuel pump fuse. Uh, what we did to get the vehicle in the shop is we just added a jumper right here um, or a fuse tap so we could jump or power to the fuel pump to get it in. And I can hear the relay clicking on and off and I can actually, I don't think I hear the fuel pump running anymore. So we may have missed our window to test it while we actually had power going through this. So we're gonna flip this unit over and on the bottom, we're going to see a comm. That's our, uh, our common channel, that's gonna be our ground. And then we have the voltage measurement right here. We'll plug into that port. And then now we're gonna jump underneath the hood and perform our voltage measurements. And we'll connect to this wirelessly. Now my black cable here is gonna be our ground. Uh, ignore the red cable end here. But I did verify with launch before doing this that the scope ground is isolated from the scanner ground. Because what can happen is if the scope ground and the scanner ground are connected to the same board inside the unit, and there's a voltage drop between where we connect this and where the data link connector has its two grounds, pin four and five, then we could potentially fry the board inside our scanner or scope unit by connecting this to a different ground source. Um, they verify that they are isolated from each other, so I can hook this to any um, known good ground. I'm just gonna go to the engine block. And then our other lead, I just have a back piercing needle on here. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, rest it up against this fuse tap I have on there. And then we'll open up the scan tool and see what we have. Now I did hear the relay stop clicking. Um, so we may have to activate that test again before we get a reading. So before I toggle this on and off again, let's set up our multimeter side. So we hit the home button. Now you can normally do this in the launch app itself, but if you wanna do uh, two windows at once, then I normally just go to the home button and I open up the multimeter. It's right here in the middle, we have multimeter and this is going to pull up our multimeter application. So I clicked on connect, it's going to try and find that multimeter. There we go, it's connecting to it now once it's connected, we should see a real-time voltage. So now when I pulled this up, it was already on DC voltage for 600 volts. If it wasn't, you'd wanna change your setting to, uh, to pick what you're looking for. So on the screen here, we click the top and this menu pops down. We can pick DC voltage current. I'm not plugged into a current uh, slot on there and the fuel pump may draw more than what the fuse is rated for. So we don't wanna do that. Um, but we'll go DC voltage, we have the option of plus or minus 600 volts or plus or minus 600 millivolts. So we're gonna click the 600 volts and it's going to give us a min max. And once we get voltage on the screen or a variation of voltage, it will auto range to our min max. So I'm gonna switch back to here. I'm gonna hit toggle. And I may actually have to cycle the key before it'll let me toggle this again. I can hear it clicking. So let's switch back. So 
So I can hear the relay clicking. I can see our voltage on the screen. And it looks good at this point. You know, we are jumping up to almost battery voltage. Now, we may get a little more information or a faster response if we were in the lab scope mode, but just for general voltage testing like this, where you just wanna see, do I have voltage? This is probably what you're gonna to go to. And see right there, I had lower voltage at that point. Maybe that relay made a bad connection. And this is probably what's going on. And we see a weird step there as well. So let me go back and we'll, we'll just turn that relay on. We won't have it toggle. And even though I turned that relay to, to just on, um, I actually don't have any voltage and I don't hear the fuel pump running either. So I'm gonna flip it back to toggle, um, see if maybe sometimes when it clicks, we are getting voltage and sometimes not. And I'll make sure to put my microphone over by that relay box so you guys can hear the activation of that relay. See, now our relay is clicking. See right there, our relay was clicking and we had no fuel pump activation. We had no voltage. We had a delayed voltage there. So now that we looked at the multimeter section of this, let's just go ahead and switch back to our lab scope like we did with the, the Lexus and look at this signal with a little bit faster refresh rate. Down at the bottom of the screen, we're going to, going to hit connect. Now in order to perform this test, we have to move our connections on the multimeter over to the lab scope portion. Uh, they use different inputs for that portion of it. Um, so I'm just gonna grab another lead that has a BNC on it because uh, we have a BNC connectors for channel one and channel two on the lab scope. Now I don't hear our relay clicking. So let me switch back to our scanner. Just gonna press toggle again, even though it says toggles active. Most of these systems time out after 30 or 60 seconds. Switch back to our scope. We're getting a very, very fast blip on the screen. I'm gonna add a little more time because we are down at 500 uh, microseconds. So I no longer hear the fuel pump running, but each time the relay clicks, let me put my microphone on there again. Each time that relay clicks, we get a blip of voltage on the screen. And we can zoom in on it just to, to see what it is. Intermittently, I'm hearing the fuel pump run. Sorry, I moved my, my screen around. Okay, so what we're seeing now, uh, and this keeps changing, our waveform keeps getting different. And I, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around with the settings a little bit, so trying to get this to be captured best on screen. But the relay clicks, but it's not making good contact. There's, there's probably a lot of resistance in the contacts. Um, and we're jumping up, I can pause this and move a, a cursor down here. So when that relay clicks on, we get a spike of voltage and then it drops back down and we're only putting two volts out to the fuel pump. And then that relay seems to make a better contact and our voltage jumps up a little higher. And when it's at its highest, we're at 11.138, which that could be what our battery voltage is because I do not have a maintainer on this vehicle. So I'm gonna hit the, uh, the stop button again. We're stopped right now. I'm gonna hit that button. It's gonna start running again just to see if we're Getting any power going out right now? I don't think we are because I don't hear the fuel pump running. So this, this vehicle keeps changing um, over time. Every time we toggle that relay on, we're getting a slightly different waveform. Now this is a known issue for these vehicles. And in this bag, I have a external relay kit. This is from Chrysler. 
Um, you can put different types of relays in here, but the Chrysler kit comes with the wires and some zip ties. And it also, the relay and the relay housings waterproof. Now you can find these uh, maybe less expensive elsewhere, but we just normally get them from our Chrysler dealership. So what we're gonna do, because the relay is not serviceable inside this board, to install this, we're gonna have to wire in to wherever the uh, fuel pump output circuit is. And then we're gonna have to wire in to wherever that fuel pump control circuit is so that you know this relay will get used instead of the relay that's internal of this board. Um, I won't cover that in this video. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how the multimeter and the scope and the scan tool can all be used you know, on the same vehicle diagnostics for um, this Launch Torque 5. It's a little different than other tools I've used, but you know, I do like having the flexibility of picking whether I want to use just a scanner. Um, if I need the multimeter, I have it. If I need the scope, I have it. It's all built into that VCI, so you know, it's there at my disposal. So I hope you guys liked this video. I really just wanted to show you guys what the, uh, the new Launch Torque 5 could do with the multimeter function and the lab scope function and even scanning the vehicle. Now I did have to reconnect to the interface a couple of times when I switched back and forth, uh, switch screens, um, a couple times it disconnected, which I'm probably not using it as intended, but I do like having that split screen mode where I can use the scanner to activate tests, switch over to the lab scope or the multimeter to take some measurements. Um, now, something like a relay clicking and sending power somewhere, you may want the faster waveform, but all in all, we just wanted to make sure that we had power going to the fuel pump. And what we found with both the multimeter and the lab scope is sometimes we didn't have power. Another application where you could use the wireless multimeter and not even use a scan tool is, say you had an issue with some tail lights at the back of the vehicle. You can take that interface to the back of the vehicle, connect it to your wiring back there. You can come back up front, you can press the brake pedal on and off, and you can you know, look at what's going on here, whether you're checking your powers, your grounds, your voltage drop. Um, you don't have to be out there with the meter during that test. You can view it wirelessly on the display. So if you guys have any questions or comments on the use of the Torque 5 or the multimeter or the lab scope, put those down below. I'll try to answer them best I can. If it's something that I haven't shown, then I'll do some research. If it's something I can perform in the shop with the vehicles I have around and the equipment I have around, then I'll try and perform that test. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.